we're live. Hey, hey, everybody. Guess what? We got news. Uh, we have news. Uh, KZ and her tweet. And her tweet says, let me get it up here. Okay, I'm going to get the tweet up here. It is. Let me share a screen. Uh, let me see. Where's my share screen? Okay. Love you too, guys. Uh, Chrome tab. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, I wonder if I can make it bigger. Let me make it bigger. Go ahead, nosy talk. Say Somebody say something. <laughs> Are you there? Hello? Girls? Can't you hear me? Oh, wait a minute. I got to go back out. Can okay, I think I I think people can hear me. I don't know. Um, can y'all hear? Yeah, me? no, it's yeah. I can hear you. Okay, cool. Then I don't have to go back out. All right. Well, yeah. So um, Zellner tweeted and said that tomorrow we would all know who planted the Rav Four on the Avery Salvage. Maybe they did. She tagged Aaron Moriarty. So I have all the questions in go. the whole wide world. Okay, Nosy, I lost you guys. I don't even know what happened. I That's knocked good. you out, knocked Becca out. I mean, this is what happened. Anyway, there's Becca. Okay, so I tried to share the screen. I think I Ooh. couldn't hear you when I did that. I must have closed something out. So I'm going to share. try to share the screen again. Okay, share screen, Chrome tab, tweet. Hey, Peggy. Share. So, hey, yeah. Peggy. Shout out to Peggy. Okay. She's the one that sent me the screenshot. And I was hey, like, Peggy. hey, Peggy. Okay, so I'll put this just up. We can't see us. All right, it says, quote, tomorrow Come we on. will find out who really planted Teresa Hallbuck's RAV4 on the Avery Salvage Yard. Now that's some freaking news, girls. What do you think of that? What do you think? Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm wondering if so she's getting sick and tired of waiting on the appellate court, but like obviously she wouldn't do anything to Steven's case to ruin it, but like that's a bold statement. Like it's big time bold. She's gonna have to put out yeah. some information to back that up. Yeah, she is. If it's, it's if like, it's if it's something like I feel like if it's something like the state or a police officer or something, then yeah, yeah. Or maybe the state uh, turned over some information, or maybe she did some. I mean, could well, she, she said she knows who she knows. She, she said in the past she knows who's done it. Like she knows. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I know I've always thought that's just a. You know, what has made her it. want to come out and tell who it is? Yeah. I don't know. Well, maybe what she has... had to wait for the proof, though. She had to have the evidence to back it up, and that's what it was. Yeah, maybe so do you, think, do you think she got some new evidence? I you think she got some new evidence, evidence, or maybe or she thought that. this is going to, maybe this is going to push the, the court to make a decision faster. Or maybe um, she got access to the RAV. Maybe, well, maybe you know, she finally got access to the ref. I don't think she can get access to things while she's in waiting for the, you know, court of appeals. I'm not sure how that works, but if she's so bold to say we're going to know who planted, that's, making a that's a very, very strong statement. You know um, what I'm saying? Yeah. Peggy asked yeah. a question. Did she get the unedited flyover? I mean, she oh, has what the maybe. state gave her and we know maybe. that they have just recently, we are, it's just be recently been discovered that um, they have withheld an eight millimeter tape from her. Yeah. Um, so she. Yeah, I just found that out too last she, week. I think it was. Yeah, oh. she technically, technically, doesn't have just the flat out, non touched original flyover. I I I think I'm I think I'm correct in saying she doesn't. Being that right. it was just discovered about the eight millimeter tape. Yeah, I believe yeah. that too. So that's. That's another Brady, right? So uh, is she, yeah. that's, that's what I'm wondering. Okay, so she's going to be make this announcement. Do you think she has, 
is going to put in a motion at the same time to include that? I don't or... I don't think she would put in a motion to include that because um she's very smart and think about all of the things that she could have put into her motion originally and she's not she's doing one thing at a time that's why when all the information was found out about the rav or whatever i think it was the rav and then she finally submitted to the court of appeals and everyone was pissed off and they were like what the fuck she didn't include this that this that it's because if she gets denied she can go right back on a new piece of evidence right dr silkman says did she find out the owner of the white jeep was the hey, one Dr. that Silk followed Man. the RAV at the in the ASY. That would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. That would be yeah. amazing. Or, hey, um, yeah, I, I have a lot of questions, and there's a few of them that I'm not right. going to ask out loud. Yeah, you, there's a few yeah. you want to keep in your head. Well, I get that. You know, here's I one that I'll great. ask out loud is, is that. Oh, so this is me just piecing together stuff that, and I'm not afraid to really say it, but right. she made a statement. Um, what a couple of weeks ago that she felt like it was a family member. Exactly. Do you think they came forward? But we don't know if she met. Yeah, we don't know if she met family member on Stephen's side or family member right. or the hall box. Now, do is she basically trying to indicate here that maybe a family member planted the rev? Uh, yeah. for starters, I. Like I said, I'm not on Twitter as much anymore because, right. as as y'all know, um, I get in a lot of trouble over there. Yeah, so that's right. I, I think you're it. on number ten <laughs> too, right? I am currently on number you hold, nine. You nine, hold nine, nine. the gold um, medal for I being just, um, kicked. <laughs> so, I yeah. need to follow her tweets more through Discord because I did not see her uh, tweet anything about what you just said. I didn't right. even know oh, that. she. I didn't even know oh, that was no, her name. she was in an interview. She with, she said uh, an interview. Oh, yeah. with that guy on YouTube. Yeah. Okay, yes, I did see that. Okay, okay, okay. I do remember that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that is you know very interesting that she would do that interview and she would you know but make I those his feel, cool statements. But I also feel like Becca, as you have always reminded me, it's her job to get her client off and. Yeah cause reasonable doubt and show why the in the trial they didn't allow them to show reasonable doubt so i feel like even if she goes that route um i don't think that she's going to produce any reports tomorrow stating like oh well here's the scientific fact that what i'm saying is factual like timeline wise yes, yeah i 100 percent am down with her um but i yeah, I just that, don't know. I, I can't even imagine what she's going to say. And and is it going to come out on 48 hours? I mean, she tagged Aaron Moriarty. So, like, where, yeah. where are we going to find this information out? Right. And, well, yeah. first of all, is it just clickbait? Is it just to get, you know? That's, that's the other uh, thing that I – because, you know, right. she's very famous for making statements yeah. and then she deleting them just- or, or kind of leaving us hanging – well, yeah. at the same time, I'm kind of okay for clickbait regarding Stephen and Brendan because oh, yeah. if she has anything up her sleeve that will make the courts move faster, I mean, not in Brendan's case, but in Stephen's case, exactly. which, you know, whatever helps Stephen hopefully helps Brendan, but I mean, it, well, she's very I'm calculated and she knows what she's doing. I don't want it to be, I don't want her to no. get our hopes up or anything, but like, no, yeah, she has to have some. She has to be released. She's got a plan. Something, something we has all to know be she is. Yeah, we all know she has a plan. Okay, she does, and she, like you said, she only has to, um, you know, prove a reasonable doubt. You know that Stephen was not there, did not do it, whatever. You know. Well, I mean, so, Willis. Didn't yeah. So allow naming it. people to me is not not a positive thing. But to to say she knows who planted the, the Teresa's art rav in the yeah. salvage yard is is a pretty bold statement. It really is. I mean, yeah. that would mean and, a you whole, know, that, that's a game changer all so the way at around. The time, so at the time that the rav was planted, you have to think about it that everybody was home. Every right? right? No, they weren't home. Right? They well, were well, you don't know. You. Yeah, they were. They were in Crivets, except for um, Stephen. 
and who else was not there yet or was everybody Didn't there? Didn't Chucky say he saw headlights? Wasn't that the that, supposed time that they thought they could have planted? Well, that was on the... I thought that was on a Thursday night and Bobby was on the property that night. Earl was on the property that night. Yeah. Steven, and Scott and Barb were also on the yeah. property that night as well as... Well, so that was a different know. night because... Because I think what day did they what day did the whole family go to Crivets? Wasn't it the second or was it yeah, it was the it was second. A, it was yeah. Well yeah, no, it was, was it? Fr- it was Friday in the morning or Saturday morning because they t- Chucky took Brendan. Right? Didn't he go with Brendan? Brendan go up there? Yeah, the Brendan same- was up yep, Brendan yep. was in Crivets with Stephen, yes. Yep. And I wonder yeah, if I'm Stephen just saying, like, Saturday around the time, or... the round time that supposedly the theory is, is that they could have planted the RAV was what that night when they thought they saw right. headlights, because that's when they were driving the RAV in. I think you're right, right. because Stephen was not up in Crivets by that time. Yep. Right. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. And, and Chucky... And Earl went... was the only one around with Pam of God came, so... Right, he was the and, only one well, there. No, he wasn't the only and one. And she found the rav, you know, within fifteen Candy, minutes. So. Candy was there too, and Candy did multiple. Okay, interviews. well, yeah, his wife. I'm talking. Candy did multiple interviews with news media sources that said Rash her and and Earl had <laughs> gone through the property on that um, the day before at least right. three or four times, and there was no rav ever on that property. Right. And so yeah. that's how you can, that's how Zellner, I think, can really pinpoint that it was that night. And then you have Siebert seeing it being taken onto the property with a white Jeep following it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And you might, it, yeah, because yeah, you made that phone call. You might want to check the white Jeep that was, you know, there was a white Jeep. And uh, yeah, I remember all that. But, but what's so fucked up is Colburn owned a Jeep and then so did didn't Bobby have uh or not Bobby? Um, no, wasn't there? Two? I don't know. No, maybe what I only thought it was that... Colburn that was the one that had one uh, similar, yeah. Or was that, yeah. I, I thought it was only Colburn. You know, Andy just keeps coming around in all this, so you know, <laughs> Andy's little um gonna sue Netflix type thing, you know, uh, just just as like I think a, a deterrent too, you know, to make him look like well they did me wrong you know i didn't do anything wrong i'm innocent you know this is why we need jinxy because she knows the exact dates yeah yeah but she's I don't, starting I to don't get know. a normalized schedule dang it yeah darn it darn it i wish somebody well maybe somebody in the chat knows exact date of uh what you know it would i think it was what day did they find the rev the the sixth, the fourth, what date? the fourth, the, the November, fourth. Okay. yeah. The fourth. Well, then, if you ask me, it was it was planted the night before, you know, or, or early early morning, maybe you know, like five six in the morning. I'm sorry, like that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was found the fifth. It was planted on the fourth. Okay, here, um, Magnolia Studios says Ryan's sister and her <laughs> hubby apparently owned a jeep. Um. Uh. I don't know myself. I, I just do, heard about it. I do Andy. remember having a conversation about that. I would obviously have to refer. Back <laughs> Colburn to- filed for divorce last month. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's what Magnolia does. That's Nan, I believe. So, yeah, I think so. Okay, it was not yeah, so six. We got the news okay. of Zellner's tweet, and this live was just kind of all of a sudden. And um, yep, I'm a so bit just, half in, so yep. my dates are not going to be accurate. If you correct, please correct me on the dates. I believe, I don't think it was the sixth. No, I thought it was the fifth. They found it. It was the, the yeah. fi- it was the fifth because remember there was also that newspaper article that Jinxie found that was a. Uh, I believe it was Pagel talking about they found the Rav on the third. Yeah, because yeah, you remember that's that. It. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So um, yeah, I, I believe it was the sixth, or I mean the fifth, that they found the Rav. I'm I'm pretty sure it right. was. Right, it was planted on the fourth and then found on the fifth. Yeah, oh my God, Nan Nan says it's the fifth too. So okay, yeah, I, I believe that. Say, and I am totally expecting any type of roasting for any type of incorrect information. 
Yeah, exactly. So, I do, you know, like, who do y'all think it could be? Ah, uh, who do you think? I mean, somebody is doing something. Somebody is either wanting that money, you know, that hundred grand, or you know, I mean, she's but that's a good something. thing. Yes. Oh, I mean, my God, it this says, is. It says uh, the rav was found on it's... November sixth. What says, oh, it says... that? I typed into Google. It says, Govery, on this on Sunday 6, November, uh, analyst oh, with the ooh. Wisconsin State Crime Lab gained access to the RAV4 after enlisting the service of a locksmith. This stained was right. observed near the that ignition. Was, that was blah, the, blah, blah. That was so it says day after they yeah, so, but it access. says, But it says it was found, found fifth, Wisconsin State Lab. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was booked in the 6th, but I, they found it. Right. On, yep, the day before they found it because they didn't even bring it in till that there's night. a make did you guys they, know there's a making a murder wikipedia no oh, really cool yeah but that anybody That's can a, change that so it's not um, yeah. yes I, and let, i want to address this comment it says the rav as listed in custody on the third no it's not yep. it's listed in custody on they found it on it was planted on the fourth found on the fifth and wisconsin crime lab gained access to it at around the six because Jinxie found a, yeah, an error morning. between the time where yeah. they dropped it off and where they actually opened it and who had the key and who actually opened it and accessed it. Um, right. But it was and a that... newspaper article where one of the, it was either Pagel or Vogel, one of those guys said to the reporter that the RAV was found on the third. And then they went back and of course retracted, retracted they were like, it. Exactly. They were like, oh, a typo, a typo. And David Moore says affidavit from Andy's wife, maybe. Ooh, mm. someone should FOIA that info. <laughs> there you go. Not, There's it's some. Not, oh, it's, it's not public info. I don't think is it. Oh, uh, it should be mm -hmm. because it's a divorce is a public it's a divorce. matter. And maybe well, she's divorced maybe, because he's a murderer, a part of maybe this murder. Maybe the scorned ex-wife was like, "Okay, use sob." You Time know what? That's what Kath Catherine Kathleen says. She says, you know, a boyfriend or I mean a girlfriend or, you know, we've solved cases by scorned girlfriends um, who turn them in. Can I ask that Magnolia Studio Design? Um, can uh, you post a link where you found that information? She's not a mod. Well, I just mean I like, could temporarily send, make her a mod to do so. Send so, it to you, yeah. whatever. It says November fourth, beaches were at Avery Salvage. Yeah. I was just talking about Ryan's calls uh dropped twenty two times. Yeah. But there's but there's no proof that Ryan was actually on the Avery Salvage yard when he dropped those calls. Ooh. She, uh, Peg, she, yeah, she Peggy, says, um Colburn and his wife have been married for probably <laughs> so long and their kids are grown and left. So there probably isn't any minors involved. No, his yeah. It his says something about private. Mm. They could be sealed. Colburn's divorce it, said something about private. They could be sealed because of the situation with making a murder. Making a murder. Yeah, I was just yeah. thinking that. And Wisconsin. he has an open Ooh. case against Netflix. So yeah, 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 yeah. Wisconsin court access says that. So yeah, yeah. Well, you wow. never know. You never know who might just reach out to Andy's old uh, old lady. So. Yeah, I, you know he's yeah, always nosy. Been a dirty bird. <laughs> dirty bird, Andy. Uh -huh. uh, I'll be in Wisconsin in July. It's all good. Yeah, you too. So we'll <laughs> maybe, see I'll, Rebecca. <laughs> maybe I'll see him or his wife out for Saturday morning breakfast or something. <laughs> yeah, you never know where you're going to meet any of these clowns for real. <laughs> never know where I'll be. That's right. Checking them all out. Oh, I mean, I'm just like, it, it, it's like, uh, you know, when just listening to her last interview and, and she was pretty bold on her last interview interview you know and i do realize Very that bold. to me to Very. me when she was naming people like that um i was thinking okay well she's putting them out there because they've already been out there so it's an easy thing to follow right and she doesn't have to really be truthful you know as far as that goes but when she said family member i instantly thought well it could be the hallbox you know that she didn't say which family you know what i mean you know, what's interesting is, is that while we were going through the interview with Brendan, that very first one when he was in the car. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that he said was uh, was that he thought family planted the car. Yeah. What? 
Yeah. He met Holbach's family. Yeah. Brendan did. I, uh, I, and I'm not yeah. saying that Brendan knows that or anything, I, but I what I am saying is, is that yeah. what I am saying is, is that he probably overheard his family talking about it. Yes, David, I do think Andy has a lot to do with this case. He was the one, um, as far as I'm concerned, he knew that Stephen bled uh, all over in the Grand Am. He was there that night. He could have took blood from there. I don't believe that sink thing at all. I think the the blood came from the car. That's Honestly, my personal thought. My opinion, I do not on any level whatsoever. There's like not even the smallest piece of information has ever made my soul twinge in the direction of the Hallbach family of them being their only fault is being ignorant to the fact oh. and obliv yeah. oblivious. Good point, Magnolia. Like, she says family is a is a very broad word. L-E is a family as well. Well, okay. So you want me to be perfectly honest? When Zellner said that, I think she was 100% talking about Stephen Avery's family. Oh, wow. Let's be real here. Let's be real here. Like, and I don't believe that his family did anything, but like when... I don't either. When she said that, I think she 100% met Somebody in Steven's family did it. I think she's already got her eyes on Bobby. Yeah. Here's Let's, I like, just don't get the stink in the blood. The blood in the sink don't make no sense. I'm not convinced that it wasn't Bobby. And I I lean more towards Ryan. Yeah, me too. I yeah, I think it's Ryan too. Case, I've never seen another case where you can right. literally take two complete different individuals yeah, and, and their them. whereabouts and their yep. motives and everything about their actions in that day, both perfectly line up to being the possible killer of a young girl. They both yeah. literally could possibly be the killer. And the only thing is we don't know the forensic science that Zellner knows. Yeah. So, that's right. That's it, the idea. And that's right. If it were She's my got a family, lot of cards in her pocket. If it were pocket. my son, I would be telling everyone, fuck no, he didn't do it either. And it's no shade towards the family whatsoever. But at right. the end of no, the I day, at the end of the day, if yeah. there is all we the, want is true, family, it doesn't if matter. If in the family that has been sitting there for 14 years, knowing what they did while two of their family members sat there innocent, I don't really feel bad for that person. I don't. I don't either. Yeah. See, and like I, I said, either. like I said, I don't think the family, I don't think see anybody in Steven's family did it. But like, this is just real talk here. Obviously, Kathleen's owner does, and she's making yes. her she's making her Denny suspect. I Bobby. agree. I agree. Right. And, and then so, she said family so real, realistically. Yeah. So realistically, mm -hmm. you know, she said, I think a family member did it. We all can guess is probably she's pointing at Bobby. As right. far as who planted the rev, um, yeah, I would be. Bobby, I wouldn't be surprised be if tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow she says Bobby did it. Uh, yeah, that's I don't another think thing. That's true. Magnolia. Magnolia, listen, that's another thing Magnolia said. If you research Jinxie on Twitter, um, Jinxie has actually posted. It's probably on foul play too. Um, she has posted Ryan and Teresa's phone records on there. It's yep. a, it's like a Google drive or something. I'm sure we can get it for you, but, uh, yeah, it's a breakdown of Ryan's calls and there are some and very, very funny things on there. He wasn't, he was always on his phone, like she says. And then there's that silence for 17 hours, wasn't it? Like well, 17 no, or 18 yeah. hours? No, his silence, the morning that Teresa went missing was from around 920 in the morning until mm -hmm. 30 minutes after her phone was last pinged. And then the first person that he called was his sister. Was his, his and sister. And he called his mom and, or he called his parents. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. And then what else is fucked up is after he called his parents, like within a few hours, he was calling a bunch of different um he was calling a bunch of different like doctors offices and shit like that. I think he was like in the middle of applying for a job while people were noticing that Teresa was missing because I believe they knew she was missing that day, but they just didn't call and report it until the, the third. family. Yeah. 
Well, isn't it some places you can't call unless uh, it's, it well, she's also an like adult. a certain amount of time. Okay. But she's and, an adult, too. Yeah, but we're talking yeah. three days. Yeah, three days. Yeah, but that's, that's what I time. mean. Like, for instance, if I decide to get in my car and drive away, and and after 12 hours, my parents call the police, technically the police isn't really going to do anything unless okay. there's evidence of foul so play. Let's take right. the Don. let's take the Don Lewis case, for example. When Don Lewis was reported missing, the detective, John Marsicano, said himself, we treated this as any other adult missing persons case, which is funny why would they treat it as a regular adult missing persons case whenever the person who filed the report said he had bipolar and dementia, could not read and could not write? So yeah, right. that's, that's, it's, it's kind see, of that's like, a failure on them because yeah. if you called and you said my husband has dementia and has mental illness and he went missing, to me that's cause for searching for that person because he's a danger. He's endangered. And right. for Scott Blodorn as her roommate, I mean, I personally have never had roommates before, so I don't know about that life. I've roommates been around suck, don't my ever. Be- I've been around but my roommates, best friends. I would worry. I've had it roommates while they had roommates, and I was like, "Bitch, I don't know how you do this, but it sucks. Don't do it. If, it's a trap." So my question would be: So if Scott Blodorn knew that Teresa had randomly gone off her typical schedule, didn't come home. Would Ryan have not been his first call and been like, hey, are you with Teresa? Did yeah, Scott Blodorn make any calls looking for Teresa? Those are things that we do not know. Right. Exactly. Hey, Neverly. Hi, Neverly. Hello, Neverly, darling. But yeah, yeah I personally think get that... Your top. <laughs> I I personally think that Ryan Hillgas had something to do with the murder. I think the police was helping him. I think realistically, who planted the rap? I think it was the police. But let me ask you this: Why would the police have any reason to help Ryan Hillgas? Because yeah, I honestly they, I don't feel see like they wanted. I feel like Just they to wanted get Steven. Steven to get yeah. Steven. Well, it didn't matter the if the reason, real killer went about the reason way. I think they had reason. I don't think they helped Ryan because but you could ask that same question if you think anybody. Involved. Here's the reason. I yeah, think anybody could have done it. Could have gotten away with it. Okay, Jinxie, well, then why would they help Jinxie, Bobby? Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Jinxie enlightened me that year, many years before this all happened, Ryan's dad was protected by Peg Lottenschlotter. For fraud in his bank corporation or financial institution corporation. So Peg Lottenschlotter and Ryan Hillegas' dad had had a very long yes. time relationship. Yes. Yes. They're, they are, were known with each other, of course. Yes. I, I get that. But why would, okay, in the same reason you're saying, why would he help Ryan? Why would he, why would LA help Bobby? If well, he that's was what I mean. Yeah. Well, why would, okay, why so would the my, LA help my, anybody? It would be easier for them to get. It would here's be easier for them to help a stranger like here's Ryan. My thing, but Ryan's not a stranger. If Peg Lottenschlotter is involved with his dad, he's going to be protected under the umbrella, just like the rest of them. Oh, Bobby, never really says she's the, not even letting go of Bradley check. <laughs> just here, saying. Here's the deal with Bobby. Bobby was going to be Ken Kratz's second option if Brendan did not cooperate, right? If if Steven, Brendan did not cooperate. They had, I feel like, the porn situation on Bobby on the computer. Yes, I know people lived in the house, blah, 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 but I do believe it was Bobby. Yeah, I do too. Li- he lied on the stand. He, It is a fact that Teresa left that property, and he admitted, based on his own admission, that he left. At rounds about the same time, whoever pulled off first, that can be debated, whatever. Yeah, but here's my thing right. with Bobby. You see the picture or the snapshot, the footage of Ken Kratz and Tom Fassbender cornering Bobby over there in the courtroom. Why the yeah. fuck is Bobby standing there with those two versus his goddamn family? Why do they have yeah. him cornered in a courthouse telling him, okay, you remember what you, you remember how, what we talked about. You remember what you're supposed to say. You remember what happened. And did he have a broken arm then? No. Did he have a broken no. wrist or something? No. Oh, that was after. No. Okay. And it's like this, because Bobby was still a kid. He was what, 17, 18, 19, something like that. And, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. He's not the sharpest tool in the shed. So you got this kid standing there being like, okay, well, I know I didn't do anything, but they're fucking sitting here saying, if I don't fucking 
flip, I'm going to prison, you know, like, oh my God, you know? So yeah, I can see Bobby being totally fucking intimidated. And then when 2017 rolls around and they re question Bobby, right? He, he has no reason to cave. They're already convicted. They're already yep. in prison. He has yeah. no he has no incentive to tell the truth. Nothing. He wasn't offered immunity. He wasn't offered any type of deal. He wasn't offered shit. Right. Exactly. So oh, that's, goes, that's my point. deal. <laughs> that's my deal with Bobby is that he got up there and lied either one because he fucking did to it. Save his own ass. Or two, because you can look at that video footage and see that Ken Kratz and Top Tom Fassbender were standing there hands in pocket in his face and you can only imagine what the fuck Ken Kratz was saying to him. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well see and I'm that's like... the thing is that I think that he was I personally think he was manipulated into doing he was subpoenaed hey, to be there. Yeah. Unless and... Catherine Zellner has you know they've taken Bobby's DNA. So for me I don't see what type of new scientific forensic evidence could come out that they didn't find before because they did take Bobby's DNA. So they, she has yeah. Bobby's DNA and she could test it against everything. So for her to come out and say something like this, to me, it's like, okay, well, it can't be Bobby because Bobby would have to have his prints on that RAV4. And that would have came out already by now, and I would that imagine. that would have came out already. So now I'm sitting here like, who the fuck was driving that RAV4? Because yeah. we know yeah. for a fact unless, you know, and unless before. unless it wasn't necessarily, like, like we said before, unless this wasn't necessarily evidence of such, it was somebody finally came clean to it. Yeah, could be. I mean, no, no I don't know. I don't know. I, I, um, Someone I finally know, said, I, it was I me, I did it, I did the VAV. Uh, can and there's you, no can you one tell me why why you think John Dieter, Dietering resigned and hand in his badge after the interview on 2017? I don't know. Maybe he was just done with the case. <laughs> Maybe he didn't want to be a part he of it anymore. He was done with the bullshit of it all. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine. But you just have to think about all the people that have just kind of vanished. You know, Link retired, Colburn retired. Now we have yeah. the Ken Kratz fucking vanished off the face of the earth after he gave Ryan an alibi after 14 years and yes, his dumbass exactly. released fucking videos proving that they that were nobody knew about Stevens rights of his yep. client attorney privilege. Like people in and this case have silent. dropped off left and right. And what's his name? Jacobs. He fucking died. So yeah, he died and he knew a lot. I think he did. He's the one that, that was, he's it, the one that arrested Brendan piece of shit. And yeah, yeah. Him and his damn poop. <laughs> But you know, I think that's uh and voicemail. He had the he had that tape for the voicemail, you know. And I'm sorry, but this will forever and always bother me. But the Hartwigs family, they live right across the street on you know, Stevens Stevens Main Road is one forty seven and right across right. one forty seven it's about a lot I think if my brain's not misfunctioning, it's about thirteen acres. And even back when Teresa disappeared, the Hartwig yeah. family owned that property and Barb I heard her with my own fucking ears. She said that on 1031. There was a fire. Five, there was a fucking fire northwest of Stevens trailer. And when I Google Earth it, it was Dan Hartwig's family's property that was having a big bursting fire that night. And she said she called the cops. I'm assuming the non-emergency. And all that they responded to her was, we know. And yeah, and you can't day, find no records. No records. And to this and day, no the Hartwig yep. family still owns the property across the street from Avery Salvage Yard. Yeah, and, and it could, he, you're, you're right. Fucking, he is now the fucking sheriff. Yeah. Crazy, it, crazy. What? He's now the sheriff? Yes. Is that what you said? Oh. Yes. Okay. He's the sheriff. But, it, it happened, please. Man, it's walking, no, and what happened on, okay, you're not on Twitter. KZ tweeted um, that tomorrow we will know who drove Teresa Halbuck's RAV4 onto the Avery Silverjet. Hey, Jazznaz. Hey, who Jazz. Who planted the vehicle, she said. Who, in other words, no, well, no, it's, uh, I can share the screen. I believe it says Teresa Halbuck's Tomorrow you RAV. will find out who really planted Teresa's RAV4 on the Av Avery Salvage Yard. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm going. Okay, so obviously, if Siebert saw the Rav Four and 
a white Jeep, there had to be two people. So if it's Andy Colburn, who's the second person? <sighs> Wouldn't be Link, would it? No. No, Link's old Link was a two. Link was, I, I think, just a you know, like a little mouse following the the cheese. He was told what to do, kind of thing. You know, I don't know. Hashtag mystery solved. Good one. Oh God, I don't know. Um, Dude, so that's what it could have been a fucking some type of Manitowoc informant for all we fucking know. Well, that's who, the other yeah. thing. Yeah, it could have been just some slum person. Had, who knows how many people they had by the fucking balls? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It could have been some random like uh person like on the side of the road. They're like, "Hey, you want to make the hundred bucks?" Maybe that's where the eight prints came from on the back. That's what Neverly just said. Oh, my bad. Neverly just said maybe the results of the partial prints came back on the back of the rev. But you'd have to have (sighs) access to the rev, and the rev is down in the ground. You know? Down in the ground in the secret. Down in the ground in a box. That's what uh, Kathleen says. But we don't know if she got, we don't know if she she was able to get you know, and see this stuff now if she put in a different motion. She doesn't have to tell us. That's why I'm thinking it's somebody I I think it's somebody basically told her what happened. She would have it would be very stupid for her to file an entire new motion while he's in the Court of Appeals. That's what I was wondering. Why would is it is it smart to do that if she got this information? Would she make an uh, uh you know put a, a, a I don't think to so. go to this or would she do a different one or she could have put this, this? I don't think this is new information. I think she is fucking fed think, up with the courts. Probably. I think so. Too. I really think she is too. She doesn't want to make him wait forever. Well, she already you know knows I mean. who. Like I said before, she already she knows who confident. did it. Listen, she she's already a lady says, I know who did it. Right. And listen, when she, what her, you know, her record for doing this is unbelievable. It's nobody else uh, does what she does. I know, she, she man. Plays a great chess game. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and a lot of people. She's calculated in every word she says to the public because she knows that media can kill your case or it can benefit your case. And she knows how to yeah. do that. You know that, Nosy. You know how to. You know what I'm talking about? It's what you say. Yeah, you know? man. I don't give a fuck what anybody has to say about Kathleen Zellner. If she's got she a is a bomb. Her, if she's got a method to her madness, I am down with it. And like that's what turned me off to a lot of not a lot, a few select supporters is that you know their patience outgrew their knowledge of how the system works. And it's like, no, bitch. She's done uh, everything she is supposed to fucking do. She has no fucking control over these judges bullshitting in Wisconsin. None. That's right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And Neverly says, I like the idea of the planter being someone who help, helping out the LE as a county worker. There was a theory on the, on Reddit years ago. Cough, cough, whoever fucking Uyghur was banging yeah. at the time. Yeah. Oh, oh that Wendy chick. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <clears throat> Wendy Baldwin. The new chick. <laughs> oh, know, yeah. Baldwin. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to exactly. hear what Ken Kratz' ex wife has to say about all the shits. The one that he was you married know, to during all of this? Yep. That's is you know, buried down so deep in his bullshit in the back of his throat. He's shitting his pants right now. I know he is. The guy's got to be losing it. Wouldn't you yeah, like to be I a was, fly on the wall? I was looking you know? him up the other day. Hey, drama. He, Love you. Mwah, good to see you. He uh, he sold his house in June. And I think that they are most likely renting at this point because since June 2020, he has no new listed properties in his or Leah's name. There, oh, LOL. Well, there was a guy that was on the Huber that didn't show up at jail and went to Texas. The same guy was in circuit courts October 5th. The same guy CB was ordered to stay away from. I don't I don't, I don't know what that means, honey. I'm Peggy. sorry. <laughs> Peggy, she's just like that, man. She knows we're watching 24 hours a day. <laughs> That's the thing. I, I think she did that. I think she did tonight. Yeah, why did she drop it at night exactly? Because... Calculated. Yeah, yeah, I think she did it strategically because she knew that people would be that's okay freaking out about it. 
I went, I went to my friend who's friends with her friend to try to get the inside scoop. I'm still waiting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, David Moore says uh, if she got something solid, like an affidavit, I think she would have to file it because it would blow the case wide open. I, I believe, I believe her even announcing this is, at least for us, it is. It's and see, that's why it makes me wonder. She's very, uh, very famous for tweeting stuff. That's kind of like, Mind blowing, and then deleting it, and then never bringing it up again. So a part yeah. of me is kind of expecting her to delete so, this tweet. She's like me, and she's had like one too many glasses of wine, and she was talking some shit online. And the next morning, she wakes <laughs> up and she's like, "Oh my god, I gotta delete that shit because she's so excited about the shit she wants to drop." I get it. Uh, TT says, "TTM fangirl says a neighbor of theirs said." in a tweet that KK and LK, you know, his sister, uh, daughter, bride split and sold the house and moved out separately. I mean, I saw that it's rumor, scary. but I have also seen photos from Leah since that happened and they look, yeah. Disgusting. And she's still with the fat yeah. grandpa. Yes. They look gross. Grandpa That's what I'm cracks. saying. It's a theory and it could have happened. Like they could have sold the house and had like a separation of some sorts, but got back together. But I don't think they're divorced because uh, if they got divorced, you would see it in. Well, hopefully it's in, because Leah was telling him to shut the fuck up or, hey, grandpa, these people are blasting you and you're looking stupid, which is making me look stupid. So I'm going to need you to either shut the fuck up or tell the truth. Let's help right. some of them. Girl power. I'm pulling for Leah. Hopefully she understands that wrinkly balls are not what's up. Yeah, his little Yeah. Hi there, baby. Come here. I can just get sick. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I mean everybody's you got everybody like, like look, foul play's going crazy with people talking back and forth, back <laughs> and forth. You know what I'm saying? They're all getting their theories out and everybody else and i love it and, so that's I mean, my you know, I, I think that's like the ultimate question that i have then is, is uh who do, who do you think planted it just straight out the barrel shot in the dark are you asking us or comments yeah comments oh. you can say it because let me tell you something i i can't help but still think it's ryan that had a lot to do with this let's so i believe it would be andy boy first. You know? Let's go with the comments first. So yeah, everyone John, in the comments. Guys, give us your then, stuff. What do you think? And then each Who do you think planted? Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm reading. Give them yeah, to you us. Read. Who planted, who was driving the RAV and who was following in the white Jeep? There you go. That's a good one to ask them. Okay. Well, comments are slow. So I'm going to go, or you go, Linda Kay. Well, it's no, the great right ad. You can't read it. TTM says Ellie. I have a hard time. Oh, drama. Drama. Did we, um, Kathleen Zellner tweeted like maybe an hour ago saying that tomorrow we will know who planted the RAV4 on the property. Yep. So, how do you like that there? On the old, so yep. that's that's the tweet that's Martha so far Dickinson. as it reads. Okay, y'all tell me when it's our turn. Okay, okay, okay. Um, TTM says Colburn in the white Jeep. I believe that. And Magnolia's studio says Ryan and an assisted by the LE. Yeah, you know? and Neverly, who you think? Come on, you can say it. That's my foul play system. <laughs> I, I, I just, I don't know. My mind is going like crazy because, uh, you know, you put all the information together and you just, really don't know what to oh that's not kz's tweet that was my fucking tweet out <laughs> yeah. get rid of that <laughs> just like i put in the the uh, link to to our live here <laughs> oops i'm reading the like things that are going on in the uh, uh yeah there's 13 the there's same 12 time there's there's 12 people watching right now so there should be 12 answers guys come on who yeah. Who do you God. think planted the RAV4 and who do you think was following them in the white van? If if you believe that theory, let's just put it that way too. Oh, uh, Martha. Well, drama says, awesome. Kathleen's got Ryan by the wrists now. So obviously she thinks Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. 
Yeah, I do believe. I don't know. Neverly needs to get her butt back here, man. She's jumping back and forth. Come on. I want to know what she says. <laughs> and David Mars in here, too. Ryan and Colburn, or Cockburn, she calls them. <laughs> hmm. So <coughs> I can't help it. It feels like that. my answer, my answer is winning right now. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't remember <laughs> what it is. And these people aren't going to neither. So until I guess I, okay, go ahead, Nosy. Who do you think? Well, it's before that, I just have two questions and I'm a huge fan of devil's advocate because I feel like it's very necessary when you're talking about yes. people's lives. When you're speculating. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, so for my Ryan people out there. Oh, wait. TTM says answer B, B O D. Man, I just don't know. Okay, okay. Well, hear me ahead. out. For my Ryan people out there. Shaz? Oh, we got more people what coming. What part? Shaz. Go ahead. What part or what during what time frame did Ryan catch Teresa? Where? Where was Ryan sitting waiting for her to leave the Avery salvage yard? Because if if you think Ryan killed Teresa, then you I have think to, then she went home. Then you have to believe that she either Ryan was sitting outside of Avery salvage yard or somewhere down the road because he had hacked into her um voicemails computer and all that because remember scott blodorn said he was there the night before and so right. either he hacked in or Teresa, after she left stevens actually did make it back home that's what i think so that's, that's more of a possibility because if you think about it um he had plenty of time to clean up the house well, nobody was there in this uh, th that house in for days. And for another thing is that he had her, her day planner. So that would mean that she'd have to go home, you know? Because yeah, but that's the, what I mean. He, like, he would have plenty right. of time to clean up the house. Nobody <laughs> called it in. Blum and the candlestick in the and, kitchen. <laughs> and, um... So Ryan, and even so when the Ryan police, even when her. the police was coming by, they weren't suspecting foul play happened okay, at the house, nor from Ryan. Problem, in my opinion with that, here's my problem with that. Unless Karen Hallbach is willingly lying. Yeah. Well, that could they be too. Cause uh, live next door to Teresa, like there's a good amount of space, but you're able to see Teresa's driveway. What cars are in the driveway? Who's there? Whatever. You have no. There's tree it, line there, nosy. You've been there. You can't see. You uh, think Teresa's it's possible? Driveway. Okay, but you're gonna tell you me. You can that see her, her house. Mom hadn't the, left the house for three days and didn't well, see the driveway's on there. the other side. Well, do you think that, that maybe, maybe Scott Scott Blodorn Scott Blodorn uh, met her some way halfway between Alvers the the salvage yard and her house and did something and then maybe brought her home in his car? No. No, I think that she went home and Ryan and her had an argument and he probably just smacked her in the head and then put her in the car and then drove away and then had to call for a ride. And but he that would mean he sister. would have to drag a body out of the house. Yeah, he would have had to drag daylight. the body no, out I of the house. I said maybe they were outside. She was outside with him. She didn't even have to go in the house. She was in the back of her car getting her her supplies. He came up from behind her. They started arguing. He said, fuck you, bitch, and smacked her one, put her in the back, and then took her off because, you know, he but had to make a phone call. Who did he call? He called tower, his sister. Maybe he needed a ride. Ping, ping off close to Avery Salvage Yard. That one, ping could have been road. at her house, too. That's what Jinxie told me. Because it was more likely that she was closer to her home when it pinged off the White Tower. So, so Stephen what? says he saw Bobby leave right after Teresa. Yeah. So or, if or, you so if you believe Ryan did it, that means that when Bobby turned the same way as Teresa, Teresa just kept going, and Bobby just went off and did his thing. And went and, and yep, and went and seen Scott on the road while they were going. You know what I mean? That and then that she story. was driving all the way home, makes it home, something in the happens. driveway. In the driveway. Okay, but here's because you can't question. see the that parents can't see the driveway from that. But the if you are on wondering where your daughter is, you're not not gonna drive by her house if she's literally. Yes. Well, 
a and now that, 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 that brings up the day. question of that brings up the question of why they didn't her. report her. Yeah. They wouldn't be looking for her the thirty first when she's getting killed. She would have been in the driveway. He came. No, in, but what she's saying is, is that you would be driving yeah, well, by the house be to see her. Yeah. Well, her yeah. parents. Her parents did call her on the first because Ryan called her parents on the first. Oh, now I see. I didn't know that. That's that's in Ryan's phone records, or um, either Ryan or Teresa's phone records. Um, that Jinxie has the file of. Ryan talked to her parents. Oh, asking where she was, or he didn't say anything because. Well, I don't know. According to Scott, they yeah, we don't know that. You know, I just know that. Yeah, it shows where her parents. I don't remember if it was her mom or dad, and Ryan had had a conversation. I think it was only one or two times. Did Bobby know Ryan? I have it's always, possible. always, always had that question. Always. Yeah. And you know who else Ryan is not her parents off my list? To play innocent. As, oh, good one. If let's just take Ryan out of the equation for the Bobby people, you know, Mike O, he would have had to have been the one to help Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. He was they were best Somebody friends. Somebody would have had to have helped him. It yeah. was yeah. there yeah. have been Bobby or Scott, one of the two. And whenever you are looking at motive, but also in a court of law, I mean, motive is not technically like, it's kind of like a lie detector test. Like, like it helps, right. but it's not. Right. But you don't have to have it. It's not the d defining right. factor. You have to have a motive, but, and if you look at Ryan on the stand and how he was talking and his smirks and all that, like he is so fucking proud that he got away with that. He is day. so cocky. Yeah, he is. That's why we're having a party in July when I come up north. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Ryan <laughs> called parents to act innocent. Yep. And yes, she probably did have her planner with her at Stevens. And that's why I say Ryan was in the driveway or came up from behind her or whatever and was saying, hey, whatever, blah, 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 knocked her out, got in the car, drove away, you know, put whatever. Um, drama. You know? How do you know that Bobby knew Ryan? Because I've never seen anything about that. Yeah, I don't know that neither. That's um, why I asked you. Also, and Becca Rachel, says it's possible because Rachel, it could be possible. I think it's possible. And let me let me just say too. the reason why I think it's possible is because it's a small town. They're both yeah. young men. They both probably been to the same bars, same places, whatever. So it's very possible I that agree. they were aware of each other's <laughs> existence. I'm not saying they yeah. were best friends or they they hung out or they hunted. The, I'm just saying that it's possible that if you said, well, hey, you you heard of Ryan Hillgast, well, right? Bobby would be like, um, yeah, I've heard of the guy. Plus, plus, listen, he was, you know, Ryan was a stalker. And maybe he was following her around the later part of October. And you know what I mean? And and mm, just happened to say, oh, Ryan. that's a salvage yard. Maybe I could run into him somewhere. And then, boom, just happened to be at the store on the corner that's up the street from the Avery salvage yard. You know what I mean? No, I do and think that if... Maybe Ryan I do think whoever I think whoever killed Teresa, I'm just like a hundred percent knew Teresa was going to the salvage yard and knew she was going to leave the salvage yard. I don't think you it know, was. I don't. I, I don't think that that so, has to play a factor in it. Someone said, uh, Rachel. I still don't believe it's her rav. Um, there are one hundred and ten percent not two ravs. There are not two ravs. There's not. No. <laughs> There it really not, isn't um, because it lets you. You really got to think about it logically. I, like, they I'm don't have a reason to switch it up, like anything like that. Because no joke, like I literally had to go outside. I didn't even believe Jorah's. Okay, like that's my dude right there, and I I love that guy, and he's like the grandmaster. But I didn't even. I was like, no, I'm gonna go fucking outside with my SUV. I'm gonna test this shit my damn self, and I did, and I posted it all over Twitter, and I was wrong. Um, yeah. there are right um, after rally, right yeah, after rally. I seen the rav exactly like hers, same color. And when I went by it, it was green and it was a cloudy day. And when I came back the other, it was shining bright, sunny, and that sucker looked blue. And I did see that paint does change. So, I and besides that, to me, it's Both not logical. Color and light they are trying to prove, well, they're trying um, to prove that this is Teresa's. Car. They have no other 
why would they want anything different other than her car? You know, where would the other one go? Where would her car go? Why would they? It doesn't make no logical sense. Don't. Peggy, that Peggy, that question is um, it's debated amongst. People. It is debatable. It's very debatable depending on what storyline you believe. So uh, I really can't once again. That. One way Ryan's call records and pattern of calling. Yep, that bothers me. This pattern um, of calling. There was another comment. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Brad. Go? Ooh, with Brad. Even they were young. Okay. Ryan also. Oh, yes. That one right there. The oh, read that points. one. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Ryan also indicated himself into, or no, in, you know, integrated himself into police lines and. Also, I think he, he was friends with Brad when they were young. Oh, I don't know about um, that. Probably. So there is part, don't even, like, I'm the most unorganized person on the planet. And, That's um, okay. So this, was a, this was there, a spur of the moment live, so is screw it. A, um, there's, whenever one of the officers, like right when Teresa went missing and they launched the search parties and people were coming and going off the Avery Salvage Yard, yada, yada, yada. I don't know who it was, where it was, but I know you guys remember whenever someone referenced Ryan as a police cadet. Oh. Do y'all remember when he that? Was not, um, yeah, I, I remember heard it. that. I'm okay, very, I'm very vague, God. but yes, I remember. Yeah. I was about to say, don't make me think I'm crazy because, yes, yeah, so, You're not so crazy. I was really confused about that because Ryan was literally out of work waiting on his license, his nursing license to go through. He did not have a yeah. job or whatever. And also, uh, where are you at? Drama must remain on the stage. Yeah. Look, it, Ryan also randomly started talking to some chick named Fauna. And yes, Fauna, that's right. I, I have reached out to Fauna. She's never responded to me. I asked her to please reach out to Kathleen Zellner. I hope that she fucking did. Um, but Ryan was spending like a lot of time on the phone with her but what was weird is in his phone records is that every fucking time he talked to fauna he would turn around get off the phone with her and talk to Teresa. it was really yep. weird and back it just popped stuff. up out of nowhere and then the calls just stopped so it's pretty weird yeah it is ryan's talking to his sister for a long time after um Teresa disappeared was uh, that their I, their norm? I don't, really I don't feel think like so. Ryan, yeah, she, he did. He talked to oh, her he for did? a little bit. Um, that was the very first call he made after his phone was silent on the day Teresa went missing, and then it became active again like thirty minutes after she went missing. Um, the first call was to his sister Tara Blowhawk, and then he like called his parents and shit like that. So. I don't know. I can't imagine a dude like being so secure with his self and his relationship with his family. He's like, Hey, I just fucking murdered my ex-girlfriend. I need yeah. help. Like, and then his whole family just like chime in and help him. I just, that is just, that's just a big stretch for me. You'd have to be, yes. I don't know what you'd have to be really dysfunctional. I don't think that would ever happen, but, but maybe one would help. You know what I'm saying? Maybe one would, but I don't think that one would keep a secret like that. I don't, I, you know, they probably, Please do the morally right thing, you know, especially when you know this case is so public and you know that Kathleen Zellner's a badass and you know she ain't fucking around and she's coming for whoever she's gonna whatever. find out. Yeah, 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 yeah it's exactly. Like, how could your nerves and your anxiety, you knowing that you had kids? I mean, Ryan doesn't have kids and shit, but he still has his career and all that stuff. He doesn't go by Ryan Hilligus anymore, he's Ryan Hill. Yeah, do you do yeah. But what about uh, what about Scott when he when Kathleen's, um, you know, when um, uh, Kirby went there to talk to um, him and he said, What, oh, Ryan, you, you, you're gonna talk to Ryan too? You know what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah. that looks shady to me too. Like yeah. he knows something about it. You know what I mean? Maybe he don't know about the murder, maybe, he, but maybe he suspects him. You know, I don't care. Ryan is, is a very strong, yeah. I strong that. suspect. I reached out to Scott Blodorn too, and Scott Blodorn's wife, but obviously that was very unsuccessful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was really super nice and like, oh. I was like, Neverly says that Magilla said that the driver of the white hero was Ryan's sister's husband. Um, his or name the is white Chat. 
his name is Chad. And yeah. unless someone found out that Chad owned a white Jeep, then I don't have well, any McGill, reason uh, to believe you know, that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't know. followed McGilla. I mean, I know he's really solid. I'm not calling him a liar on any kind of level. I'm just saying I haven't seen right. it. And based I haven't on heard about it either. recent experience in the last year, I'm sorry. I'm just going to fact check it for myself. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't, don't know because I, 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 I've never heard it. So I don't know. If anyone wants to tweet you know, me the link or whatever, I mean, I'm at not nosy Wren on Twitter or send it to Linda, Becca, whoever, you know, I would love to see that. I, I don't know any, Hi, I know a little bit about Chad, but I don't know if he owned a white Jeep at that time. Karen Halbach had the strangest reaction to this whole thing. I would have sat in the, at that house Teresa lived in. Ryan would never have been able to. I yeah, agree. That is too odd. I don't to, like the uh, fact that he inter- Karen, that he inserted himself everywhere in the his salvage Karen yard. Karen Hallbach reminds me, like her demeanor, she reminds yeah. me of like a domestic abuse victim or yes, like somebody abused victim. her. Yeah, like if she says the wrong thing, she's gonna get her ass beat. <clears throat> she might drive Sorry. something like that. You don't know, and that car could have been beat up to hell while they were driving it around for a couple of days before they found it. We don't know where it was located when they hit it. You know what I mean? Could have been up in the freaking hills somewhere, you know. We have no idea where it was. And, it, you um, know, just because she got a brand new car doesn't. Listen, this girl was in her car a lot driving around. And I've done that, too. And you don't. Your car doesn't stay clean all the time. You know what I'm saying? I you, have not seen not one picture of the RAV4 where there were bolts and nuts missing. And beat up and all that. It wasn't beat up. It was dirty inside. But she was in it. She practically she, lived in it, of course. I, I'm just saying I've looked at all the evidence photos that have been. And I've never seen that either, though. And I have not seen one photo where bolts and nut, I mean, honestly, no. when you're looking on the outside of a car, how would you see if bolts, are you talking about lug nuts? Because you wouldn't it see tires. bolts and nuts missing from the outside. If you're talking about the inside, I mean, I have ragged some cars. And out. nobody knows if she would drive that or not because they don't don't know her and i don't think the car yeah. was in bad shape the only damage that was done was because of whoever had it because that that's wheel literally well was all exactly up what there. drama just yeah. said like they took yeah. the car apart like they were searching for drugs and i agree they literally took that car apart like they were looking for fucking um like somebody had just crossed the border or yeah or put body parts under it or something you're right they or did or they were and taking you know it what? apart they... so well that they could place their own shit there exactly well we do know that Everything was planted in this case, you know. I mean, because we know Stephen didn't do it, so it had I mean, to I be don't planted. Know if Therese, I don't know if Teresa's in the back, if her blood in the back was planted. Do we know if well, that blood was planted? N- no, I don't think that no, blood was planted. I don't, blood, I believe I don't that think was that blood her. Was yes, planted. that was splatter. Oh, okay. I believe that You're was hers. About, I'm just talking, talking about, about the, the blood for any, okay. yeah. Okay, you're talking about if they're talking about the battery. I'm pretty sure that yeah, well, they were yeah. in depth with AC Rookie and Henberry. And I'm pretty yeah. sure that was proven that the battery that was replaced, it was replaced with a Crown Vic uh, battery yep. from a cop and car. And it was large. It was, linked, it was linked back to Andy Colburn. So if yeah. that's what you're referring to, then yes, that's just another reason why Andy Colburn's a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, and that's another reason why I do believe he's been in it. I don't believe anything the state said. Not a single word. You know it. They lie in ca- case of all the time. Never really you got that right. We have read things that are just like, there's no, when did they, um, yeah. And we know it's that, really Becca, just from- It's hard to yeah. see like an old grandpa, like, you know, like Colburn and Howie, and y'all know who I'm talking about when I'm talking about Howie. Um, yeah. yeah. He, it's really hard to see these old wrinkled pieces of shit as like these evil, evil but they work then. bonds yeah. of Satan, you know, because they're so quiet talking and so mild mannered. And, and so you know, old now. They, yeah. They look like such victims and shit. So when I see Andy, it's like, man, I really have to like, be like, you look like my grandpa, but you are really a piece of shit. But they weren't <laughs> that looking. They didn't look that way back then. I mean, they were strapping young cops that were fucking then. assholes and, and they knew what they were doing. And shit. you know what? The guilt has made them old. 
all this shit they did, that makes them old. All that stress on them makes that old. I, everybody that's involved in this case must be shit in their pants tonight for what this tweet if they see now. Um, I'm Neverly, not even kidding you. Neverly, I agree with you. You said, I don't believe anything the state said, not a single word. Yeah. And here's my opinion. I think just like in the Daniel Holtz call case, if you have to question one piece of evidence, you have to question every yeah. single piece. Yeah. And according to the state, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, there were 904 pieces of evidence that need to be re-questioned. Exactly. Well, yeah. And uh, any lab work done by uh, uh, Miss, uh, you know, Aquanet, uh, Bird's Nest, <laughs> Sherry Colleen, you know, whatever. You know, I mean, she looks like the 60s with, the, you know, a mixer in her hair. For real. I don't I like her. I don't trust her. I don't do. believe for one, you know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Back in the 60s, you know, they put that, what they call it, beehive. That's what it was. And she just forgot. The only thing she did to modernize it was to take the curls out of the shit and just keep it high. You know, she should have came from Texas. No, is he the high of the hair that goes to that God, you know? No, honestly, yeah. Linda, you know why I believe she was so casual and she has committed so many, like, you know, acts of bullshit and all this and that? She's yeah. so protected, and you want to know why? She's protected just like Carol Baskin's protected because she has so much yep. fucking dirt on every fucking person, every detective, every sergeant, every yep. chief, that she could turn around and be like, oh, here you go. You never know when someone's keeping a private personal journal. And imagine That's, if oh, she God, yeah. dumped someone, if she dumped something on the DA's office that was like 20, however many fucking years it's been for Steven, years old, where she was instructed by this person to do this and make this test result come out like this. Like she could literally ruin someone. And when I see someone so calm and casual on the stand like that, that's immediately what I think is that sh that person knows something on somebody that could literally yeah. end them. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> look at Epstein. <laughs> you know what I mean? He killed us. I mean, somebody killed him because they didn't want anything he was saying going to come out. You know, well, and I so. feel like, you know, what could Ryan have possibly done to her body to where he felt so confident on that stand to smirk and smile like that? Or how did he feel so protected that he could smirk and smile like that? Well, OK, uh, the, let's put this scenario in play. They they find out he did it. OK, Kel Colburn does. All right. And then Colburn goes to whoever, you know, his uppers and says this and they said, great. Uh, you know what? She was last seen over at the salvage yard and Andy knows this. Okay. So they go, okay, well, we got a deal for you, buddy. You're going to keep your mouth shut for the rest of your fucking life. Okay. If you don't, you'll be dead. Okay. Your family. But see, that, they could have threatened them with anything. Me, and they said, look, so we want Stephen fetched. Avery. We'll take this away from you and we will put it on Stephen Avery because they wanted to get Stephen at any fucking cost. I they mean, took Brendan for this. You know what I I'm saying? I guess I'm in denial and naive to think that they would be willing to do that because someone someone like that could flip on them at any moment. You know what I'm saying? And they would have to live the rest of their lives knowing that this person could flip on them at any moment. And Anybody like, could flip on them. Their partner which, that they thought was great could flip on them. Obviously, somebody flipped on somebody told something because she's going to tell us something tomorrow. You know what I mean? I mean, and the more people that know, the more chances of the truth being told. Honestly, you know what I'm saying? What I believe hearing someone talk about it being um, Chad Blowhawk, uh, which was Ryan's brother in law, driving the oh, Jeep yeah. onto the property, that actually that actually makes me that makes more sense to me than law enforcement actually working with a private citizen to frame another person because well um, that's you know. true i no i i get that thought too what you're saying so then what at what point do they decide to keep framing him but and here's they my got thing the key I, first the kid they got I the key before know, they got the car no yeah, i've yeah. always said in all my theories i have no i'm not convinced yet that Ryan didn't plant the RAV4 on his fucking own because he uh, knew that they already were suspecting Steven. Yeah, and LE true enough. Had, and Ellie had nothing to do with it. But then when they came there and saw that, they didn't even fucking question it. Because why would they? It played right into their hands. And Ryan's over here like, all I have to do is plant shit on Steven's whatever. But 
Here's my next question. If Ryan burned her body, where did he burn her body at? Where was um, Ryan? How about the deer to- camp? Where, where there was-, was two hot barrels, okay? Ryan One was, was on never, fire. Ryan was never on the deer camp. Ryan has been around there. I'm sure he knew the deer Look, camp was there. Ryan, the only time Ryan's phone was missing, the t- the time it was down was when she went missing. And then Ryan's last phone call was around 730 on the night of Halloween. And the person he talked to was Fauna. So I can only assume as a young guy, Ryan was setting up his plans because he did talk to Scott Blodorn as well. And then he talked to Fauna, and so they were setting up their Halloween plans. He never called Teresa. He never was trying to find out what Teresa was doing, no nothing like that. And so he went out partying for the night. So how did he burn her body between killing her and going out for the night and then waking up and continuing on his life. Where did he burn? Well, that, that right there doesn't, that, that knocks him out the wind for me then. (laughs) If that is exactly what happened or is that the fucking alibi that Kratz gave? No, no, no. I don't have any proof that on Halloween night, Ryan went to a party. I'm just speaking based on his phone calls and I'm speculating that, him, Scott Blodorn, and Fauna all had uh, Halloween party plans that night because they were young. Uh, yeah. Scott wasn't working. He was obvi- uh, Ryan was talking to Fauna. And, and but that's Ryan, at night. Okay, wait Ryan a minute. Now that's at night. Time. Right. She but left the Ryan, Avery Salvage Yard at 2 30. So this is no, in the no. afternoon. Yes, I know. He but went I'm home. Saying Ryan could have killed her. Ryan's Put her in last a barrel and phone burned her. call on Halloween night was at 7.30. He never made another phone call all night long. Where okay. the fuck was Ryan all night long on Halloween? That's what I'm saying. Maybe he really wasn't out with his friend, like you said. And he, because she got, he could have killed her and put her somewhere and burned her anywhere for all we know. We don't know. We just do know for a fact that it wasn't on in an open pit. It would have to be in a container, right. like a barrel for sure. And they did that everywhere. So there was barrels everywhere. He could have been, you know, there's a lot of woods around Teresa's house. He could have buried her, did that anywhere. You know what I mean? And put it, I scattered think, it. I don't think in, I don't think he could have done it anywhere because as we know, it takes a massive fucking fire to burn a body. Okay. It, no, it just so takes a containment, a very hot one. But you know what? My, where here, was that cows that smelt went, all that stuff and ran? Here's where was where that? Down that rabbit hole was he's a nursing person or whatever. He was getting licensed, right? Right. How do, how do we know that, you know, he wasn't just waiting at Teresa's house and he stole a vial of fucking medicine that knocked her ass out. That's what I, yeah. Okay. There you go. You know, that's another theory. I thought that she could have died out overdose or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know what I mean? How do we know Ryan didn't have access to a crematorium? That's another thing because them bones are burnt up big. Time, yep. you know what I'm saying, and and like I'm saying, if he was going to burn a body, even if it was in a barrel, okay, let's just say it was in a barrel, you're going to have to burn that bitch all fucking night, all night, like all night. Yeah, and he wasn't and heard of all night. You're right, but you're going to have to think of mm-hmm. like the space. Where was he? Where could he have been? Like, did he just go to a? It wouldn't have had to be a big him? space if you got a barrel. You just have to put her in the barrel and keep that sucker t- toasted hot. So and you where will was burn her, that body down. So if Ryan did it and he did it on this night, where the fuck did he hide her RAV4 for three, four days? That's what I'm saying. We don't know where that sucker was. You know, you have no idea. I think her it RAV could have was... Just been some- I think her RAV was off on Cuss Road and that's why so everybody was on Cuss Road. Yep. I think and so too. That's, that's what I'm saying. It could just be as simple first, as you know what I'm saying, and then brought over to the salvage yard because the kid, because the, the LA just thought, well, why not? You know, I mean, we want to get Stephen. You know what I'm saying? I'll say this: I do agree with Jinxie. Um, so as we know, Ryan was on trial, and he said he just guessed her password from her computer. So that means that he already had her password, and he could log into her phone account from her computer. No, you're right, Neville. How do what? we really even know them bones were Teresa's? We really don't. Okay, but we do know that I, Teresa, I, I believe Kathleen, Teresa's gone. 
I think Kathleen Zellner, if anyone caught it during that interview with the YouTuber, she made a comment that I almost fell out of my chair over because she made a comment and said, she said Teresa's remains. And then she like reversed and backed up and said, she said random bones, you know, like it was almost like a slip up to me. So, but, um, I like I agree with Jinxie that Ryan had been logging into her account, finding out where her appointments were, what she was doing. Yeah. And think about it. She had the same password to her computer for to log into her phone account as she did for her um, voicemail, which was her sister's birthday. So if Ryan was able to log into voicemails, he could have heard Steven's voicemail and marked it as unread. And yeah. he could have been parked anywhere along the side of the road, anywhere and honestly, I do think he was parked along the side of the road and he somehow flagged her over because if y'all do, if y'all remember, there was red paint on her fucking headlight and Ryan drove a red Corolla. Uh, yeah. And red so Corolla. that's how I think that her, yeah. I, that's how I think that the RAV4 got, that's how I think people saw the RAV4 off of 147 he thought he hid the RAV4 and he didn't do very well. He went back and dumped it off into the woods. And then I don't know what the fuck. Ha- I don't have a theory from what the fuck happened from there. But we know something happened at Cuss Road. Yes. Yeah. Something big happened at Cuss Road because there was too I many mean, people I... there. That, you know, for too long, they had a lot. They had ambulances. They had crime le- lab. You know what I'm saying? So there's, yeah. Honestly, and I think that's where he probably burned her body. But here's also another one of my theories. I Another one of my theories is if Ryan dumped her RAV4 off in the, off, off, you know, Cuss Road in the woods and shit like that. Think about if he would have left her body there for a couple days, what kind of wild animals would have destroyed her? He goes back. He collects her remains and burns them in a tiny little barrel because it wouldn't take much then. And then he sneaks right. onto the property and dumps the bones in the RAV4. Mm-hmm. I mean, think he's a nurse. He knows biology. He knows science. He knows, you know, what the body can tolerate and all this and that. Like, there's so much. Like, and if your theory is Bobby, it's like, oh, okay. He had a porn thing of weird shit. He followed her off yeah. 147, managed to somehow flag her down randomly. And Bobby's a tiny dude. I'm sorry. Um, I know Teresa was a tiny dude, but she could have fought back enough, enough, unless he had some type of weapon. And I know in one of Casey's theories, she was hit in the head with some type of like mallet or something. But yeah, I she could have done before she was shot. Was, Maybe I don't she think that was the case. And I don't think she was shot. Well, we wouldn't Nobody have been able to tell her. either by the bones. Nobody shot her with a fucking twenty-two. <laughs> That's what that I know. I'm telling you right <laughs> now. I don't believe that there's a hole in them. Damn, I don't. They, that a twenty-two loses so. There's not enough velocity to go through one side and the other. You know what I mean? Unless you got it right to yeah. her head, maybe. You know, and there would have been no, then there would have been more blast mark. You know what I'm saying? It would have the front of it would have go, been blasted out a little more. Um, someone said to go. Go ahead, Becca. I was just gonna say to go back to the whole cuss road theory. I personally think she was buried out there. I think she might still be buried out there. Oh, I don't. I don't well, think I, her bones I, are were in that burn barrel. And I'm just, that's just my thoughts on that. Uh, Peggy said he didn't have to burn her that night. No, he didn't have to burn you're her right. that night. But that was the only night that he really went off the grid, according to his phone calls. And that's also the same. No. And then you have the night. Um, okay, let's court, talk about Bobby's dropped, whereabouts on that Bobby, night. Where he Where dropped, was Bobby? That's also on the fourth was the same night where he dropped the 22 phone calls. Okay. Where and was Bobby, Bobby? On which night? The, 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 on the Halloween. If we're talking Ryan killed her on Halloween or whatever, where was Bobby? He well, was working. Bobby. And Bobby he can prove hunt, that. Bobby went hunting that day. Scott saw right. him. He came back and then he went out with friends. Okay, well, who was his friend? Omenson or whatever, Mike or, or whatever no, his name is? I think that was Blaine that went out with friends. and Bobby Yeah, because Bobby out. went to work. 
Bobby had to come back and go to work. And I think that right. the same night he was late, like two hours to work. Right. Yeah. But you ain't going to burn a body in two hours and hide it. He, no. He's not that smart. You know, I'm not, no. you know, so that doesn't fit either. Okay. It's more plausible for Ryan to have done it than it is for Bobby. But then again, if you're thinking, well, maybe he just killed her and put her aside and then did it the next day or after work or something that could be, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But the planting um, of this Rav seems funny because wasn't it Bobby that was with Steven or whatever, and they went and looked for the headlights. Well, that was on the night that the Rav was planted. Right. That's what I'm talking about. He yeah. was with Steven. So how Chuck could he was, plant yeah. it? Okay. Well, Chuck said he saw, or Steven said he saw headlights. And but Chuck's according to lights. According to Siebert, the time frame he saw the Rav and the Jeep come on to the property was like way after that. I thought I could be wrong if no, it was like six, they, they were like, like six thirty or seven o'clock, seven, something like that at night. I think um, it was. I'm not exactly. Neverly probably knows the time. She's pretty up on that. I'm, I can't remember that kind of stuff. Peggy, they it takes very special. Uh, it does take a psychopath to burn somebody's body versus just killing. Yes. And cutting them up or if they're in there and their bones and they're burning and they're taking a sharp object and, you know, poking the bones that could also break your bones up like that. But you got to realize these bones, none of them are any bigger than your pinky. So look at your pinky and then think about how, what it would take to make a body do that. Crematorium. Yes. But you'd even get it smaller if you, unless you took it out in time, you know, a burning barrel. Yes. But hours of burning uh, a fire pit. Absolutely not. It, it would take days Days and days and days. It, it took a guy here in Minnesota a week to uh, completely get rid of a girl, okay, and an open pit. So, you know, um, I don't know. And even her bones, they had opaque on them, okay? So that's why I wonder about that bullet hole opaque stuff, okay? We all know Eisenberg is a stupid fuck, right? Okay? I don't know. I, I, I don't know about that bullet hole and the opaque thing, you know, because... The case that was here in Minnesota, the girl was burnt. There was just very little that they found, and they could not determine if it, whose it was, DNA and this and that. But they were opaque markings on that, you know, body. And he did. He admitted to strangling her, not shooting her. What's to say? Are you there, Becca? Did I lose you? No. Yeah, I'm here. No, I'm here. Okay. I'm sorry. I wonder um, if info I'm was just, released. I'm just. I'm listening. In the Okay, I don't know about that. I consider a source R.E. Bones, fat boy, sweaty, and stupid Leisenberg. Yes, exactly. You don't know what to believe about them bones, you know, um, because she's just not a reliable expert, okay? They should have, you know, there's so much wrong with the investigation that you can't really trust even their evidence. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> None of it, even the bones. Um, Peggy, uh did they do forensic testing on the bones? Okay. So, so Ken Kratz, it was a huge deal at one point. Um, he got up in the middle of the trial and he made a statement that said, I wouldn't spend more than 20 seconds on the bones. Okay. That's right. Yes. So he did not want anybody paying attention to those bones. He wanted to make sure they were totally fucking irrelevant like, because if people started asking questions, he would have been fucked. And then after all that came out, um, so Kathleen Zellner filed her motion. And then everyone found out that the state had already given the bones back to the family, you know, when they weren't supposed to. So it was a violation of a court order, you know, whatever. And then... When Kathleen filed one of her motions or responses, or I don't remember what it was, the state literally responded back that there was no proof that they were even the victim's bones. And so that's why it was such a big joke on Twitter. Not really a joke, but a big thing that the state gave back chicken bones to the family. There was <laughs> chicken bones in there. 
There because, was bird bones in that. Yeah, pile. because they had no fucking idea right. if they were Teresa's bones or not. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much that. Uh, and then um, she, she did you, they did find question. any teeth? Yes, they did find some teeth in the in the burn pile. They I found a there half was of one. a tooth. Oh, okay, a half. half of a tooth, and it was. Um, now listen, seven pant pairs of panties. She knows this is a profession. She went on and she stated that this was not a match. She showed why it was it was glued exactly. One tooth was glued together and it didn't even match. And she showed it in an x-ray and it was not a match for her. it. Just put it on there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so wow. I, I never knew she did that. Oh, yeah. She did on Eric Cozy's uh, um, first uh, mammothon. She was one of his guests, and I watched that. I was so <laughs> she is excellent. <laughs> she knows her shit. Oh, so yeah, I know. well, she's in that field, so she's in the uh, in the dentistry field, so she knows what she's talking about. I and that's I another. Knew, I knew it was glued, but I never saw her do an X ray or whatever. I'm well, she showed a picture that. of it where it showed the, and I think it was an X ray where it was totally like off. You know what I mean? You could see where the roots, like yeah. there's how your teeth grow. You know what I mean? The lines of your calcium or whatever it was. Right. It was, so who it was did not fucking, match. Right? Who was the fucking dentist that was bullshitting for the County? Simley's Simley's to I, read Dr. Simley Simley. I think is how you pronounce it. It's testimony. Oh, it was not. It was? Okay. Yeah. That's Neverly. See, I told you Neverly knows her. Mm -hmm. She knows her stuff. <laughs> Yeah, you got a big old spanner. You're a tool there, Neverly. How do you like being a tool? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, ladies. You see, now these I'm people keep have, me thinking. I'm going to have to come off of here because I have to go to bed. I was just okay. going to say the same thing. I can't believe it's already been an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Me like I, I hate I to cut like it I short for forever. me, but. Yeah, but it's all good. Oh, I gotta wake up and do the whole, you know, school thing at seven freaking a.m. in the morning. Well, that's that's yeah. funny, is because I actually have to wake up at six a.m. to go to the zoo with my clients at seven. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, take pictures. Yeah, well, listen, I don't yeah. have to get up early, but I'm not gonna stay on here by myself because I don't do that. I'm not that you kind can, of person. Though. I believe in you. We've oh, already. Oh yeah, we've, right. I believe in myself too. It'd be like, <laughs> okay, I ain't got nothing to say to myself. See you later, guys. Bye. It could well, be a hundred people in here. These, you interact with these people. fine, fine people in the chat. That's how you but do when it. it gets you, quiet, you just keep... Well, thanks for everyone for yeah, hanging out. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys, for hanging out and just like you know, kind of tossing around some ideas. And you know, it's it's. Then I'll probably be tossing around a whole lot more, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. In foul yeah. plays. So, well, anyway, you know, thanks, we can ladies. come back on. We can come back on tomorrow night. Once oh, you we, can believe uh, I'll be on tomorrow to discuss what's going on. So look for yeah. that because yeah. I will be on and we'll get nosy on here. We'll get jinxy on here too. So, you know, we'll get some good. Um, these are my gals. You know, what can I say? So <laughs> anyway, thanks everybody. Mm -hmm. Have a good night. All right. If you can sleep, have a good night. See okay? y'all later, Gators. Gator, be Bye. nice, be kind. Bye. Bye.